Hey everybody, it's Marshmallow here. This is my Gotham Season 3, Episode 3, 4, 7, 9, 11. I don't know what it is. But it's the newest episode. I think it's Episode 6 is what it, review this is. Uh, so yeah, Episode 6. I loved this episode. And we'll talk about why in a second. But I just wanted to say that I'm not live tweeting for The Flash, Arrow, or Legends of Tomorrow this week. Because I am so busy this week, I don't have time. Unfortunately, and I am going to make an update video on what shows I am reviewing, what shows I'm not, how I'm going to be changing the channel. I think I might just go to straight up voiceovers only, or maybe not. If you guys want to comment about that in my new video that I'm going to be making next week about it, then you can. Uh, but I just want to talk about that, just get it out of the way. But anyway, let's talk about Gotham. This episode's spectacular. I feel like this show, or this episode, uh, showed us how good the show can be without using all of its characters. We don't have grown-up Poison Ivy in this episode. We don't have Selena. We don't have Bruce. We don't have all the characters in there. We just kind of have some of the core characters. You know, a few new characters as well. Uh, newer ones, anyway. But I feel like we didn't have to deal with anything too outrageous. It wasn't too big of an episode. It was a really simple... I don't, I don't think it was a filler episode. I think it was a very simple thing to introduce because, again, we're still having that Mad Hatter arc. They kind of ended it off and resumed it here, so now they're going to keep going with it, and I think that it was really nice. Again, I don't think it was any filler episode of any kind. It really laid out a nice arc, I think, in my opinion. Like, this is kind of like the next chapter, right? It's kind of like how you read a book uh, or, like, different volumes, like different issues of your favorite uh, comic book. You know, you start with the Mad Hatter, you end off with one volume, you have the next volume, it starts a new arc, right? So that's what I felt like this episode did for me. So let's talk about it. So, uh, of course, Matt Hatter is back. Uh, and when he comes back, he ends up having this game with Jim. Now, I loved that it kind of felt like a comic book while you were, like, watching it. Like, Batman has to save this person and this. Because Jim is kind of like the Batman of right now, because since Bruce can't be Batman, he's Batman without a mask, right? He's Batman without all the gadgets or the Batmobile. And all that. You know, James is the Batman of the current timeline that they're in. So I like how he had to choose from different people, like he had to save the kid, but the couple died. Loved how, like, that just turned out. I love how Jim's reactions were, you know, he didn't, it didn't phase him as much as you'd think, because he's been used to things like this in Gotham, but at the same time, he's very much, you know, he's very much, I guess, against it, you know, well, obviously he's against it, but you know what I mean? Like, it's very much like, it doesn't phase him, but he knows that it was wrong, he knows that it's that they he might have could have saved them too like who knows it's just like it's shocking to Jim but it's not as shocking as he he would have been when this was happening when Gotham season one was starting right so to me it makes sense in that sort of way uh, and then he had to save the two guys that were in the electrical helmets like he couldn't save both of them so they both died right it just like straight through it was so good he had to visit Barbara which is kind of like Barbara Harley she's kind of like Harley Quinn so he had to go visit. A criminal. Like, that, it was just so much fun to see him go through this process. I'm kind of like Batman visiting Harley or Joker to get information because Batman has done that before. Like, in Killing Joke, if you guys have seen the animated movie Batman, or in the story, the story too, the classic uh, Killing Joke storyline, he has to go and visit Joker, right? And so he has to go do these things. And so Jim does the same thing in this episode. It's it just, it was laid out really perfectly. I think that it was a really good, simple, straight you know, storyline that just, it was really good. Uh, I won't talk about Penguin as well, but I kind of wanted to talk about Gordon first. Uh, but anyway, he ends up going to get uh, Lee and, of course, Valerie Vale, his new his new in love interest. Um, so I, I like this quite a bit. I like the tea party scene. I don't know if it should have been shorter or longer or what was going on. It just kind of felt a little off to me because... He kind of tried to confuse Mad Hatter. Another thing that I really didn't like as well, we'll talk, we'll talk about the, the tea party scene as well in a second, but I just kind of wanted to backtrack, is that earlier on in the episode, he was in the tower, and he was, like, talking on the phone and kept hanging up. I was kind of like, okay, I know what he's doing. He's waiting for a truck or something to come by to hit Jervis or whatever. Like, he's trying to plan something. And then it was just, like, Gordon hanging up. Like, I just felt like that was so out of place. That was one moment in the episode where I kind of cringed. I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. He was just hanging up on per Like, it was just messing with him. Like, why would Jim be messing with Mad Hatter, who's messing with Jim? It doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe that was kind of like a piece they just kind of wanted to throw in there. But I would have done something different with the scene. Uh, I would have maybe, like, just had more dialogue. I don't know. Just something about it just I didn't feel right to me. And then in the Tea Party scene, it felt off because he was trying to confuse Mad Hatter. He was trying to confuse Jervis. But at the same time, it didn't work because, like, the goons were there. And then he had uh, uh, Mario in the background, like, trying to 
killed Jer- Like, it was just really weird to me. It felt kind of off in that area, but just, like, a tad bit. Like, the phone scene was, like, way off, but I feel like this was, like, the tea party scene was, like, a tad off. Uh, but it was still, it was still really good. I, I think it was still top-notch. Uh, you know, just a, just a few, little few bumps in the road there. But other than that, I think, it, I think it was pretty good. Really, really good. Uh, so I think that was a great scene. And I like how we had to choose between Valerie and Lee. Because normally when you see something like this on TV, you're like, oh, not one of these storylines again. But I think I really liked how it worked. I love Miranda Bachran. I love Jamie Chung. I think both of them are fantastic. And I think that both of them played the scene really well with being, like, who to choose. It wasn't over-the-top horror movie. It wasn't cheesy choose-between-your-lover story. It was... Gotham's version, it was like the Batman comic book version of it, and I think that it really worked. Now, I love how he says, kill Lee, and he shoots um, Valerie, because he you know he knows that he loves Valerie, so I think that we'll have to deal, like, you know, I think that it'll be a really interesting love triangle from here on, because, you know, when you choose to kill someone that you were formerly, like, involved with, and you love still, and have feelings for, obviously he's kind of still has feelings for Lee, same with Lee and Jim, uh, so when you choose to kill them, that's kind of crazy. Kind of reminds me of like if you ever played the video game Until Dawn, with the scene where they're like gonna, uh, where he has to choose between killing himself. Uh, Chris has to choose between killing himself and killing Ashley. It's kind of like you choose to kill Ashley, it comes back to haunt you because later on in the game it has a butterfly effect where Ashley leaves you to die. So to me, well, sorry, spoiler alert if I spoiled the game for you, but it's been out for like a year. Anyway, so to me, I feel like really interesting that we're gonna have to deal with that later on with Lee knowing that. Jim chose to kill her. So, I don't know. We'll see how that works. But maybe Jim knew that in terms of that, he would kill um, Valerie because, you know, you choose to kill Lee, that means he doesn't like her. That means he doesn't love her because he loves Valerie. So maybe he knew. I don't know. We'll see. But it didn't seem like they were talking like that way at the end of the episode when he sat next to Lee. I don't know. Um, but I thought that was really cool. And I just loved the Gordon storyline all throughout. I thought it was fantastic. And we also got, uh, they're setting up the storyline, of course, for Barnes' uh, super strength. Like, he's going to become a metahuman, I believe. So we'll see what happens with that. I just want to kind of throw that in there. I'm not going to talk too much about that. But let's talk about Penguin and Riddler. So Riddler ends up meeting Chris Kringle 2.0 um, at the end of the episode. We'll see that storyline develop. We'll see that love interest develop. I like how Penguin, you know, Penguin, I like the mayor stuff. I like when he was at the school. I thought that was a really cool scene. It was kind of funny. But I kind of didn't like how he was, like, push the kids down the stairs. I kind of wish he was, like, more of a, like, maybe he was getting involved. Even though he doesn't like kids and he doesn't like being at a school, he chose to be mayor. You know, just because you're mayor doesn't mean you're all-powerful, right? Like, you have to be mayor if you're mayor, right? I just felt like that was kind of a given. So I didn't like it as much as I ho hoped I would like it, but I kind of liked where they were going with that story. It was kind of funny to see him talk to that kid. Um, but I like how they are pursuing the Penguin-Riddler romance. Um, I think that it's really nice. Uh, I still think people are not going to like it as much as I, you know, like it. I think it's pretty great. I think it's great. I think that they're putting these characters together. Um, it's it's different and it's new, and I think that people will love it, like me. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. I think it's pretty interesting that they're going to change up the characters a little bit. You know, Gotham changes up the characters anyway, but I think that it's really cool that they're, you know, making this change. Because I feel like it's more modernized. I feel like, you know, people... You know, comic book characters these days are, you know, changing. They change so much. Like, I think, I don't know, who else? Wonder Woman, she's bisexual now. You know, I feel, I don't know, there's more. I think there's more changes that they made to some characters. I can't remember for sure, but I know Wonder Woman. And so, when they're making these changes, it feels more modern. It feels like it's more accepting. Because these characters were created way back, like, in the 40s, 50s, 60s. So, to change them nowadays makes it really... Fresh, and it makes me feel, you know, like, loved because they're making these characters who they are, who they should be, right? So, and what it makes sense for them to be, right? So, I just think it's pretty spectacular that they're doing that with Penguin. I think that it's, it's, it's really great. So, I like how they're setting it up to have Penguin possibly get involved in this love triangle. I like it. I think it's really great. Um, and I can't wait to see what happens if Penguin... Uh, we'll get his love after all, so we'll see. Um, but what did you guys think of the episode? Comment down below. I think it was a great episode straight through. Uh, I think that it just, it made me happy. So what do you guys think? Comment down below. Links up there to my other Gotham videos. Links down there to my Twitter, Instagram, Vine, vlog channel, and gaming channel. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. So